With gear like the Blowpipe or Twisted Bow, the content at RuneScape's endgame has become much easier these days. New gear comes out with each high level update, making it easier and easier to take part in the highest level of RuneScape gameplay. But what if I stripped down to the essentials only? What if I took it to the extreme? and placed a cap of how much money I could spend to gear up for each boss. Playing RuneScape on hard mode for 24 hours, I want to see what the lowest amount of GP I can spend on each boss is to equip myself for each of RuneScape's hardest encounters. First up, Jad. What if I kill Jad with only one item? No armor and no supplies. But let's take it one step further. Killing Jad with no items whatsoever. Or even further. Completing all 63 waves of the fight caves with absolutely nothing. Relying only on my stats, knowledge of game mechanics, and maybe a little bit of luck. That's so weird, I just randomly ran into Spark Pack. <laughs> well, off to the fight caves to get the itemless fire cape. Well, to attempt it. I honestly don't, I haven't planned at all. I have no idea if this is going to work. Oh crap, the bats. <gasps> no! The bats! Yeah, that's right. The lowest level monster in the fight caves is my number one concern. You see, I only have 96 prayer points to work with for the entire fight caves. The idea is to preserve them by prayer flicking. Double tapping my prayer icon every 0.6 seconds allows me to keep my prayer activated, but it doesn't make a loss of prayer register. This is a bug, and this challenge wouldn't really be possible without its existence. But that's why bats are the bane of this run. Every time they attack you, they drain prayer. One prayer point plus whatever damage they deal. And because I don't have any range or mage weapons, I only have my fists and feet to deal damage, I'm always gonna get within distance for them to hit me. But there's another unique mechanic that allows me to get right next to them such that they would normally be able to hit me, but they can't. This method is called flinching. If we're not in combat, then I hit them and they're supposed to hit me three game ticks after. But I simply get them stuck again, wait for a total of nine game ticks and repeat. The problem is, I have to set that up for every single wave where they spawn while juggling every other monster. And they're the most common monster in the cave. Any mistakes and I lose my precious prayer points. Try saying that three times fast. But before we continue any further, I do want to thank today's video sponsor. Enjoy the bit. Hey, why don't you try to kill me on a budget? Who are you? Say your last words, because you're about to die. You look like Nex, but with more purple. What? You look like a tooth fairy that ate too many grapes. How dare you? I have slain countless words. You look like if Barney and that goth chick from Beetlejuice had a child. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. This video is sponsored by Dark Nemesis, an immersive action role-playing game that's coming out this month. As it's a mobile game, you can play anytime and anywhere. The graphics look great, there are epic 3D visuals and background music, making for a really immersive battle experience. And guess what? They have PvP in this game. They've got Battle Royale, 1v1, and guild battles that you can play with your friends. You can leverage spirit mechanics, wing designs, and unique companions while you play. You can choose to play as one of four class types, a warrior, gunslinger, assassin, or mage. Personally, I'll play as our scary purple friend here to take on onslaughts of monsters and play with friends. I'm really impressed by the graphics and music, definitely a game worth checking out. To support the channel, play now by clicking the link in the description. And thanks to Dark Nemesis for supporting the channel. Here are the other mechanics to keep in mind. Blobs deal one damage to me every time I melee them. I must step back to avoid melee attacks from rangers and majors. I can trap all monsters on long rock corners. I can't trap projectile monsters on the Italy rock corners because the skeleton and the sulfur vent allow ammunition to go over them. And any kiting around the map I need to do will need to be accompanied by prayer flicking so I don't take damage. And one last thing about the 180 meleeers. They outheal my damage. I can't just brute force them, I have to get them stuck on a wall. So I think I'm on rotation 4 of the fight caves. So I'm going to use that knowledge to hopefully plan out my next route for the next wave. Wave 17, and I've already lost 6 prayer points, which is pretty bad. Uh, but I'm going to keep going and see how far I can get. Sometimes I can hear you calling. Oh! Woo! 
Well, good fight 20 minutes. Guys, look, I needed my friends to come help me, so I brought them into the fight caves. No, nah, just kidding. There's, it's just the overlay. Where are you, big boy? There you are. First Ketzek down, 32 to go. Juking the bat with a flinch to get past it. Oops. Although in theory I could prayer flick against the ranger, then major, then step back and repeat every 2.4 seconds, it's not something I can do consistently. So although this ranger is right next to me, taking one step towards him would untrap the major south of Long Rock, and I would be getting hit by both at the same time. Instead, I'll need to get myself into a position where only one of them is attacking me. Wave 48. Keeping the major and ranger stuck behind Italy Rock, I create a mini arena to duke it out with the bat, without it ever hitting me and zapping my prayer. Wave 50 and the major and ranger are to my south. There's no other way to deal with this melee other than this method. Using the blob as a blocker, I'm able to combine mechanics and flinch the melee without it ever healing itself. Oh Lord Jesus, what have you done? Failure! Puzzle 55, I need to stand right next to Italy Rock, wait for the ranger to hit me, go all the way north, and then come back south. This ensures the ranger is within melee distance so I can actually hit him, and it blocks the meleeers. Ooh, that was close. I may have failed the challenge, but I'm still gonna give every wave my best shot. I don't care how many attempts it takes. Oh, you bet. Here we go. Two majors at once. If I haven't learned from my mistake on wave 51, then it'll kill me here. Thirty-two down, one to go. Here we go. Ninety-one? What are you? An idiot sandwich. Well, I proved to myself that I could get through the first 62 waves without any items. And as a separate challenge, I want to see if I can do no item jad. Goodness, that damage. Oops. this up, Martin. Come on, hit. Hit. Please! 
Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, it's done. Look at that beautiful thing right there. No item Jad. With checkpoints, I got the no item fire cape. <laughs> That's so cool. Yes! Oh, I'm so happy with that. That was awesome. And apparently finished an elite combat task. All right, for entertainment purposes, gotta get the pet as well. Oh. Now time for Bando's a super strong God Wars dungeon boss. This is gonna cost me 86,000 GP to give this an attempt. Making sure to use the Bando's full helm because it's the same price as a rune full helm, but it counts as a Bando's item and I get plus one prayer from it. The diamond bolts really carry the kills and I actually don't take as much damage as I thought I would. Kiting corners, Bando's rarely ever hits me and he only does when I make a mistake. This is called the 6-0 method because I'm hitting him 6 times and he hits me 0 times every rotation. Now I actually looked at a guide for this because this is a pretty well established method. Granted, people don't typically do it with less than 100k gear and the guide I followed is in the description below. Nice kill. Well yeah, this is pretty feasible. It doesn't seem to be that different from using an armadillo crossbow or even a twisted bow. I mean, obviously it takes longer, and I could even incorporate flicking into it if I was a little bit better at this method, which just takes practice. Counting in supplies this time, I'm gonna see if I can kill Vorkath with only 32k. Let's be honest, this one was a given. Just doubled the bank, tripled the bank, actually. Demonic Gorillas. If you don't count untradeables or ammo, all you really need is 40k. And if you're looking to just get one kill, you could do it efficiently with just 5k. I just got 100k. What? Oh my god. Nice. Well, <laughs> every drop has been more than what I'm using to kill them. Out of all the bosses I'm killing on this list, this is definitely the most consistent and best for making money early. Next, drop some really high priced items, but they also drop supplies to kill her with, making it pretty unique among all these bosses. I'm going to see how I fare with a 90k budget setup. You guys are poor. You're all poor. This is so troll. God, we have such a good team. <laughs> what? What the heck? Now with Kriara, you could just go in with a room crossbow, and you would only get one kill per trip. A much more realistic approach is to bring chinchampas and use those for a kill. So although this is more expensive, it is more realistic to get multiple kills per trip. For this type of setup, it costs 440k. Well, I brought pretty much the perfect amount of chins to get one kill. They are a lot cheaper, so they're better to bring for a budget setup than black chins, but if you're looking to do multiple kills, definitely bring more chins. In terms of budget setups, the fight caves are the most complex challenge I've taken so far. And for me and others probably have the most uncharted territory. The five other monsters I covered in this video are pretty detailed through other videos on YouTube and guides, but I really want to plunge further into even harder challenges, such as a 100k budget inferno, and see what items I would use in the theater of blood if my money was restricted. So hit that like button if you wanna see part two.